Greetings and thank you for joining me on another Old World Exploration. Uh, before we get started, I want to show you a recent release from Jared Boosters. You know, that channel just recently released uh, an Old World Cleveland video as well. It gets into some of the prehistory and some of the, the uh, explanations uh, down through time. Always uh, tells really uh, interesting stories uh, and provides very uh, high quality visuals. So if you're not familiar with uh, this channel, certainly uh, check it out, give them a sub, follow along. So today, zoning in on Cleveland, uh, a very familiar area for us uh, in the videos you've seen from this channel. We've done Pittsburgh, Detroit, um, Chicago areas like that. I don't know if I did one on Chicago, but um, a lot going on in Chicago. Um, Buffalo, of course, all in this area, the Great Lakes. So Cleveland, obviously, right in that same category, having a lot of architecture that doesn't fit the historical narrative. And we'll be bringing some of those visuals in this video today. And the first shot we're going with here, the town square. Of course, you have this very old world looking uh, monument in the center. We also have this very large building in the horse and buggy era with stairs going down to the doors. And a nice high quality photograph to begin. And of course, you hit the streetcar narrative uh, full on in effect in Cleveland. Nothing new there. And these very tall buildings, right? Turn of the century tall buildings. Um, they don't fit the historical narr narrative as we're given it. So that's one, one I always like to feature those. Um, whether or not they look kind of plain or they have a bit of uh, what we call antiquotech. Just uh, more of the same. Here you have a school and it's ornately decked out you know with all this uh you know statue work or molding whatever you want to call it and then you definitely have that uh the castle like uh feel with cleveland a lot of arches a lot of rounded corners and uh, old very old looking stone or veneer whatever you want to call it um, Here's a quick shot of the armory. You'll see this again a little bit later on, but looking very old here. And then let's look at the historical narrative for the city. And certainly not uh, a deep, long history here. You have, uh, they've sort of sectioned it off on Wikipedia here, the, the uh, beginning, so right after the uh, American Revolutionary War. I guess it was General Moses Cleveland here, um, the city named after. You know right after so we have a historical um, point in time kicking off settlement in this area and then you have the uh, amalgamating of townships nearby uh, in this time period here civil war is the big uh, um, hinge point of american history for sure um, you always get the industrial growth the big boom happening in this period and this is usually the period of time that most of the buildings you'll see um, are attributed to having gone up um, and as you'll see, you will see pictures from a lot from 1897 in this video, and you'll see that uh, um, the, those buildings look a lot older than something that would have gone up in this time period. And let's have a look at the uh, population. An interesting population curve, actually nothing new. I've seen this in a lot of cities at this time as well. Um, current population, just under 400,000, but you have here around 1930 a peak. 1950 to 1930, uh, almost a million people. You go back to 1900 in that time period where, uh, say between post-Civil War, so here to here, and this, this city jumps in size in a ridiculous leaps and bounds, um, close to what it is modern day. So you have this bell curve and this decline in population. Again, um, we're living in a time with supposed uh, exponential population growth, but you have so many of these cities um, in the States with uh, with this curve and having peaked quite some time ago. And of course you get these uh, a numerous amount of schools um, with all this all, sort, all sorts of uh, um, tech, I guess you can call it. Some people call it tech or architectural design, um, but it's really a silly explanation and a lot of people say okay these these buildings went up in this fashion and look very european because all these settlers that came over were 
uh, European and uh, again that the timeline doesn't fit these buildings feeling old very old And of course you have the the streets from the time too so this is probably the uh, first uh, first decade 1900s um, very very well established curb work on the streets um, and then you have this layer of mud and underneath the layer of mud and you can see it clearly in this picture you have the rail lines and the have a very very well worn um, brick roads or cobble roads whatever you want to call that there's a good shot as well of the old curb and probably what looks like a topping of some sort you can see that concrete poured topping on top of an old world curb so it's a covering up effect going on here nothing new I've seen this before having a very rich history to Cleveland um, um, you get the Standard Oil Company um, starting out there with the famous name um, building the riches so on and so forth here you have the basement as well basement area horse and buggy the need to dig requirements to dig to get to get all this built um, and many of these cities too having a lot going on underground so just not fitting the historical narrative as i see it another shot color shot of the armory Many of these old buildings leaving us with a date. You can see 1887 there, leaving no doubt as to when what these were built. Hmm. I don't know. And there it is again. Feeling very much like something I have seen in places like Poland, Czech Republic, Germany. Right, this type of work. You have the polished granite columns here. no shortage of churches in Cleveland the temple here looking very big next to the hospital couldn't really find anything else on this and that's another thing that's I find fishy about the historical narrative is there's a lot that um, existed that it's very difficult to find any sort of evidence on or much of a story about so I think we're, uh, as many have said, we are a species with amnesia and we're looking at uh, a uh, hijacking by, I don't know, for lack of a better word, parasitic entities um, and then a repopulation of uh, what's what, what once existed here. And uh, that's difficult for a lot of people to hear, I know. Right? You have to really reprogram your, your, uh, your brain. It takes a lot of deprogramming to uh, accept a lot of the stuff which so many of us are unwilling to do. So, but um, that's just how I see it. I think that's what's going on. I think the evidence is mounting. And I also think there's evidence of um, some sort of cataclysmic uh, event or events that have occurred on this, uh, in this realm, let's say. And uh, we see evid evidence of it once we, uh, once we gain the eyes to see. It's, it's impossible to unsee it. Here's an armory, central armory, um, being taken down again. To the, how old is that look? When is that supposed to have been built? No, there it is before the demolition. So, high schools, who builds high schools in this manner? How many high schools do you know have this many floors? Are, are we to believe that uh, at this period of time, we're talking about the 1800s, um, it was just something that was easily done? We don't even do it today. Right? If I were to believe that this was something that would just be um, easily done um, for the purposes of teaching uh, children, it's uh, you really have to stretch. You really have to stretch your uh, understanding of of all of this. This the citizen building. You can hardly see it there. But this is another really. Uh, I like this one. High res. You get a good sense of the street here. Very interesting how the brickwork goes here from the from the uh, grate here in the street so we're dealing with infrastructure that's been there a while it looks like this has all been sort of cleaned up as well very early automobiles and then massive columns um what we call romanesque i suppose um, cornice in the front here 
and all sorts of details like this just over over the top details and I get the argument too well these people had nothing to do but work all day they still didn't have the means that we have at our, our disposal to, to build this stuff um, and I don't know if that I don't know if that's entirely true as well if that's what all they were doing was working all day I would suspect life was uh, was less uh, hectic and I think we live in a world now where people working two three jobs and trying to uh, feed a family or just get by I think we're at desperation right now as far as that goes we're looking at um, evidence of a civilization that uh, I don't that could not have existed in that matter so you're really lead, lending credence to uh, the theory when you say oh modern day we don't build like that because of time and money you're lending credence to the um, possibility or the likelihood of there being a previous civilization that was a, in a much higher level of uh, um, comfort and existence. So, like I say, the uh, um, the historical narrative is uh, is not allowing for that. If your your argument, your argument is also that uh, these people had to work day and night to build these buildings, then you're it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't line up, I should say. So all these, uh, with the little, with the writing here, from 1897. So all these buildings, firmly standing in 1897. And remember, you saw on the Wikipedia there, um, only really a 30-year window of, of industrial development. Um, there was a canal uh, also built from Cleveland, no longer in existence or being used, I should say, like many of the canals. That's a really um, strange narrative as well. The canals. In this photograph showing us these poles that we've seen before and many have said yeah telegraph poles and maybe maybe there was another purpose maybe they were inherited from a previous uh, setup I, I'm leaving it open you can uh, nail it down hammer it down but I'm gonna I'll leave the ends out leave the ends out for the tide that binds how about that Central Police Station of course, I mean, would you build a central police station like this, modern day? Of course not, but... Lakeside Hospital, the asylum narrative firm there, sanitary fairs going on here, Masonic Temple. There is a, there is a texture and a quality to these buildings too that we don't have or don't build with today. There's a knowledge of uh, sacred geometry and uh, uh, dimension and proportion, all those things that uh, was obviously being masterfully used, as far as I'm concerned. So this, the assumption that we were sort of digging ourselves out of the muck, and we had a couple nasty old. I mean, we did. I think. I think there was all sorts of this war. The wars we call, and we separate the wars by name, I think is all part of the one big war against humanity. And uh, we have been sort of enslaved into this new system. And there's so much that's uh, smoke and mirrors put before us. Because what I'm seeing in, in these uh, photographs are evidence of the uh, existence of previous uh, previous civilization that uh, shouldn't, according to our narrative, the narrative we've been given shouldn't have the ability to um, build in this uh, fashion. Look at this, the armory. You saw that in the photograph. This is, this is no longer standing, this tower. So you've seen the color photos of this. Um, wouldn't it be nice to see the color photos of this? But we can't, it's gone. 60s there was a lot of uh, demolition going on a lot of these being torn down a real progressive initiative no progressive you want to call it progress i think they invert everything so not progress in my eyes progression hospital state hospital insane asylums like workhouses look at these things yes i know they're drawings but they are i believe they're depictions of uh and the, the intent is that they are, but I believe many of these drawings are depictions of uh, structures that once did. Uh, 
And I see a lot of buildings like this. There's a good chance that something has been removed, a dome or a tower on a lot of these as well. I'm starting to suspect as I see more and more. This is the inside of the arcade, Cleveland Arcade. You get that, you see the lights, you see the clock, and then a lot of the wrought iron work. Posts built into the railing. Really, really nice central meeting place for uh, community. So I think we're looking at uh, evidence of a civilization where community was uh, of the utmost importance. Right? We've been uh, shoved into our homes, uh, literally, the past few years. Um, and we've been put in front of screens, and we don't have the social aspect of our society that once existed and I think I think that's a, by done by uh, done with intention um, I think that sense of community you feel that connection to people that you live close to was uh, very strong in the old world and that's a part of what they need to wipe out in our genetic memory possibly this is the inside of the courthouse And you'll see, you'll see the auditoriums built for people, places, people to gather in very, very large numbers. You'll see the opera houses, um, music halls. This picture really kind of jumped out at me. Supposedly the Everett House on Millionaire's Row. Cleveland had a Millionaire's Row. Many of the major cities in the States seem to have had a Millionaire's Row. But this, uh, this picture really portrays the juxtaposition of the old world. It's grandeur its immense size and the new world um, on top of it basically pasted on top of it now this would be uh, inheritors right? what I call inheritors inheritors of the new world what do, you, what do you want to call that through the, the religions or through the Masonic organizations or really they're both the same thing uh, coming through a lot of these secret networks um, religious networks the reseeding of the realm in uh, with them on top, you know, making the calls and making the decisions. Here a depiction of a, of a city hall. We've seen two city halls already. This is a third depiction. Is it just a drawing or did this building really exist? I don't see why not. I think it, it looks to me almost like a sketching of something that's uh, standing. And again, that old feel. Here's a high school. A proposed chamber of commerce or did it actually stand again looking like a sketching of a photograph really and this is the uh, interior of the Garfield monument uh, as a James Garfield uh, was a president uh, of the United States and this is a monument to him supposedly built to him uh, again I suggest we're looking at inheriting the old world and a bit of a Masonic uh, well I mean here it is, really, there he is front and center on his building. Hmm. And also look at this a bit, looking like a bit of a heat damage, looking very old. Um, Garfield Monument, I saw this in a previous photo, this is better, this reminded me again of Salt Lake City, um, Galveston, places like that, um, the coast of the UK, southern coast of the UK. Um, this would be on the Great Lakes, right? This looks like a great time though. We have all these people out and look how social it is. So there's definitely a, still a carryover. They, even though this, the realm was reset, I suggest that there's a carryover of erasing that genetic memory of our need for community and our need to, uh, to gather, right? And to share stories. Sharing stories is how we keep those dirty little secrets from gaining ground. Been too much of that, if you ask me. This is Gordon Park. Why would you build a bridge? Uh, in a city like this, with the, out of the stone. Look, you even have the sidewalks with their own little archway. It's just fantastic. Bit of a grainy photo of the Hippodrome. Again, a place to gather, to take in entertainment and culture. Hippodrome. Curved ceilings. Circular. You have lights. It's just, again, if you do any of this type of work and you have to try to build this, very, very difficult, very, very expensive. Um, and you're going to use all technology at your disposal to try and pull this off. So it's a monumental feat for a previous, uh, 
for people living in the 1800s, according to our narrative, to try to pull this off. It's actually an impossible feat, I would suggest. Some of this stuff, it's so intricate. Um, it has to have been done with something, some knowledge, some uh, technology, some know-how, um, or some time, or a, or a people that we are not being um, told once existed. That's my suggestion. Another hotel, leaving these hotels again, a place to gather. These places had lobbies and restaurants, and they're amazing, amazing places. A um, place where you would go to a hotel really for a holiday. I could see you meet people from all over. And, um, energy centers as well, looking like batteries. So, as far as like a societal energy, um, charging places, right? Places to keep that fabric of society strong, I think. So many, so many of these hotels have all, pretty, all but wiped from uh, from our collective memory. Here's an art museum. Museum of Art, fairly spectacular. There's the armory. You get a sense of the age of it. There, this is from 1900. This photograph. Oh, looking like it's been there a while. Public library. Why wouldn't you build a public library like this? Make it look like a church. And like I said, no shortage of educational institutes. Remember there was the uh, wave of normal schools at the time? Um, basically places where in, educators were being educated on what to teach and how to teach. Uh, I suggest the reseeding of the new world um, leaned heavily on this re-education process. So if you factor in the uh, orphan trains and um, a lot of what is being uncovered now is basically a society where you, you, you have the children working in factories without parents, orphans narrative. It's, it definitely fits the bill for some sort of uh, reseeding of population. And of course, you need those normal schools to pull that off. Because you have to set a new narrative, and that's where the state fairs also come into play. Um, where they provide an explanation, they provide a history, people like Darwin. Um, giving us a historical timeline. Um, and then implanting that basically in our perception of, of the world. I like this one too. This is a, really kind of gives you a, an idea of size. You see the people down here, the uh, rail cars, and these massive arches. Like these are about three, four stories high. These are arches, unbelievable, immense. Right? The Rose Building. So, oh, I thought this one was interesting. I, I didn't get a name for the building. If you're from the area and you're more familiar with any of this stuff, please, of course, uh, add your uh, add your knowledge to the uh, to the thread. We try to keep an open mind on our uh, on my comment uh, on my comment section. I'll, if you definitely want to come at me with something, I'll probably come back at you. If you're uh, if you don't seem like you're coming at it with an open mind, I'll certainly welcome the com comment and keep it on there. But it's uh, we're not looking for uh, you know. We're looking for open minds. Let's put it that way. Leave it there. Severance Hall. This is, uh, there's the outside. And inside. Oh, the Sheriff Street Market didn't last long. It, it, amazing building, really. I, I'd love to see more of this one. I couldn't find much. Um, this would be, again, community, right? A gathering place, a place to go, a place to sell what you've grown or made, a place to buy what other people have grown or made. Original farmers markets, right? That's what I'm seeing. Coming to the end now, the Shrine Church of St. Stanislaus. Let's see some of the pictures of the inside. So many of the churches, these churches too, so easily explained away um, with the, the might and power of the church and their ability to get things done, right? Because of the, they were just so wealthy. Um, here we have the pipe organ, but 
we're seeing what we call old world evidence here in the new world um, and you see it everywhere there's no shortage of it so again I think uh, it's obvious when you see these things um, what we're looking at is a, a previous civilization that's been basically uh, systematically um, wiped out being erased from our memory and it's like I said it's an ongoing pro process I've said that before um, we need to remember we need to hold on to the, to the memory it's from the Trinity Trinity Cathedral no this is not in uh, in uh, Italy or Austria this is in Cleveland why gold browns right <laughs> yeah now they poison our minds with uh, pop culture and uh, professional sports and yeah, try to distract us with uh, Netflix shows and Hollywood movies so it's funny I'd say the truth is much more interesting than their fiction there's the Trinity Trinity Cathedral amazing and the interior again you have the pipe organ uh, love the chandelier work here the lights just love the look of these old ones would love to adorn my house with uh, these types of uh, light fixtures old world light fixtures and again when you see these photographs turn of the century photographs of these cities in north america and they're looking old and tired like they've been abandoned possibly for a while and uh i don't know the evidence to me is clear here's a market as well the west side market no less spectacular than the sheriff street market so i think we come to a close this is the end of the file um i hope you enjoyed this video and my ramblings uh, and I uh, hope you see the importance for community and our need to uh, get together no matter what side of the argument we're on. In any uh, case, we need to be able to hear all sides and uh, share. And despite disagreeing, share with each other and enjoy each other's company. So thank you for joining me.